Hello Blazers, it is your boy, boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. How guys doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. And in today's video, guys, we're gonna be doing a little bit of a story time. Yes, I haven't done one of these videos in a very long time, but today I feel like I wanted to share a Russian drunk story with you guys. And I wanted to tell you about basically the craziest night of my life, which involves basically me meeting foreigners on the streets, hanging out and drinking with them, getting checked for drugs by the police, then uh, getting punched in the face a few hours later, and then at a different point in the night, running away from the police. Uh, I know all of this sounds crazy, but you know, as I'll tell the story, it will make sense, I promise you. I even, you know, dressed up a little bit today that, you know, I look like I'm going to a nightclub or something to just set the atmosphere, okay? I did not look like this back in the day, but, you know, it's quarantine and I dress like garbage all the time, so today I felt like, you know what, let's drip this place up a little bit. But before we get into this video, once again, I would like to remind you guys that this video is sponsored by May, because today is May 22nd and that means that my YouTube figure is going live and you can go and buy it now. Once again, YouTubes are these little figurines that you can buy to support your favorite creators and also uh, have it as a little souvenir for yourself. Once again, I still don't have mine because the Russian customs have still not released mine because, okay, I don't really want to get into it. It's been on my mind for like a week now and I've actually designed my figure myself and spent a lot of time on it. So if you guys want to have a little souvenir for yourself or something to remember, I guess, and also support my channel and me, then make sure to go over down in the description to the YouTube's website and check it out. Now though guys, let's get into this Tana Mojo story time video. So let's set the tone for this entire story. This was the year of 2017 and I was on a little bit of a vacation or a trip to the beautiful Russian city of St. Petersburg, which is one of my favorite places in Russia to go to. And this was a period of time where I was going through kind of a rough patch in my life, but I came there to visit some friends. And what we just did is that we would literally just meet up every single day and drink ourselves into, uh, I don't know what. <laughs> Almost every day we ended up in some interesting situation like rooftop and one day. One day though was very much out of the ordinary and was the craziest of them all which you know I'm about to tell you today. So I think this was a regular like a Saturday or a Sunday. Me and two of my friends basically were just walking around drinking beer or whatever, being nuisances to society essentially. Just for the record, I don't do stuff like this right now. I don't just walk around and drink in public but I didn't really care back in the day, okay? So we were just drinking beer and at one point we decided to switch to vodka actually and like what we would do is that we will like walk into random people's uh, apartment buildings to their like stairs stairs and we would literally just stand there and drink like like actual Russian homeless alcoholics like this is this is cap dude but yeah so basically we did that and uh, we finished yet another bottle of vodka and we decided to head down to this club that we knew of and see what's going on there now here's the thing I hate clubs but there's this certain underground club in St. Petersburg that has like very alternative I'm not gonna say its name because that would be you know free advertising for them and they should pay me but it's very alternative and it attracts like people of all walks of life like people that come in there just like, like beginning from neo-nazis to punks to feminist girls to like rappers I don't know what's going on in there it's just a vibe okay so we went to that club and the thing is this was actually during the day or like close to the evening and that club actually kind of like works 24 7 it's not only a nighttime place so we went there and nothing was really going on in there because there was some like movie nights or like movie time in that club and so we decided just you know what screw it we did not come into the club but we just sat by the club entrance and drank yet another bottle of vodka. So yeah, at first we were just sitting there alone drinking, the three of us, but then uh, people started slowly coming in and all those people as well did not really want to, you know, walk in and watch a movie they haven't seen, uh, you know, and they missed the most part of. So like over the course of an hour, about like 10 to 15 people came up to us. You know, nobody had a negative energy actually. Everybody was just chilling out, you know, we met a whole bunch of people, we started talking, it was a completely nice vibe. And I actually met a girl there and we started talking about rap and stuff like that. There was a genuine connection, I guess. So she joined our little squad and all of us, we went away from the club and the four of us started just hanging out again, walking the streets, uh, being nuisances to the public and drinking in public. And eventually about, I think, two to three hours later, we actually got back to the club. And at that point, there was actually nobody there. However, we saw some people walk by us and there were two girls and two guys. And so two girls walked over to us and they said, hey, uh, there's supposed to be a club right here, right? And we were like, yeah, but it's like close today. Nothing's really going on. So, you know, you want to hang out with us? And they were also basically like us just wandering around doing doing nothing, so they were like, yeah, why not, right? So I was really drunk at that point, and actually we got introduced to the guys and the girls, but I, I didn't really notice anything weird. However, we started walking together with them, and I hear those two guys speaking Spanish, straight up, speaking Spanish. I'm like, wait, am I... 
Am I that drunk that I'm hearing a different language? Are, are they actually speaking Spanish? I'm like, I'm like, ho, ho, wait, wait, wait. What is going on here? Why are you guys speaking Spanish? What is happening? And both of those guys are like, oh yeah, sorry, you know, we didn't tell you or whatever. One of them says that he is actually half Russian, half Mexican, and he is actually able to speak perfect Russian. He speaks Russian very well, but he also knows Spanish. And turns out that the other guy was actually a exchange student or something, or just a student from Colombia. And he also spoke Spanish, but his Russian wasn't really that great, you know? He didn't live in Russia for a very long time. That guy though, you know, Russian is his native language. I was like, wow. That is sick, okay? They were also like real ass dudes, you know what I mean? Like afterwards, after this entire story, uh, I actually checked out their uh, like VK profiles, you know, the Russian Facebook, and they have like pictures of them like, you know, in, in Mexico with like guns and shit. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Like they're actually in the cartel or something else. So guys, you know, if anybody wants to smoke, you know what I mean? Yo soy abogado, el amigo de cartel, you know what I mean? <laughs> that was a better console reference, I'm sorry. Yo soy abogado, el amigo de cartel. So yeah, if anybody want to start shit, I I got shooters. I got shooters from Mexico and from Colombia. You know, they're like those live league type dudes. And so the two guys and the two girls that we just met were like, yo, we need to get some more alcohol because at that point we're already, you know, out of stuff. And as far as I remember, that was actually already pretty late. I think it was about maybe 11 at night, you know? And in St. Petersburg, actually, they don't sell alcohol after 10 p.m. However, here's the thing, and this is ridiculous. Near this club that I was talking about earlier, there's a store. It's actually nothing short of a legendary store at this point because that store doesn't really give a fuck. Basically, they sell alcohol not only after 10 p.m., but they also sell al alcohol to like 15-year-old girls that uh, end up in that club as well, and the club doesn't really care either. I don't really want to talk about the implications of that entire thing. I'm not interested in 15-year-old girls, uh, just so that you guys know. So yeah, that store basically just sells alcohol to anybody at any time. And so those dudes went in there, they bought some stuff, and we were just sitting there by that store on like a little, uh, like you know those concrete things you have on the parking lots? We were sitting on those and just waiting for them to come out of the store and a large fucking Russian police truck pulls up to us and I'm like, uh oh, what is going on here? And I think maybe literally like 15 cops come out with like guns and everything. And the cops just started, you know, looking at everybody, checking everybody. I guess they were looking maybe for drugs or whatever, or maybe for like underage drinkers because that is a problem that exists in that club, you know? But basically what happened to me is that I was just sitting down like this and uh, those concrete things are very low to the ground. So I was sitting there like, you know, looking up at the cops like this essentially. And I was drunk out of my mind at that point. And so one of the cops just comes up to me and like, uh, like he comes up to me with a flashlight and straight up like puts my, the flashlight right up to my eyes like this and like is checking my eyes. I guess, you know, because if like I took drugs, I guess my pupils would be very, very huge, right? They would be widened. And so he looked at my eyes like this and he was like, all right, you're fine. And yeah, he didn't even like check me or anything. He just left me alone. And all they did is they actually woke up to our Colombian friend who's Russian is not that good and they actually just checked for his ID to see if like he's like an illegal or whatever so he showed them like his student card and his ID or whatever and they were like all right you're cool and they all got into the truck and went away and I was like wow that was scary okay so if you guys are already commenting that this video was clickbait and I didn't actually run from the cops hold on this is not the full story yet so you know that was it the mission was complete we got our alcohol the cops did not confiscate our alcohol nobody got arrested or anything so we decided to just uh, go down to a little park somewhere and just sit there and chill and talk and drink and whatever right and so we're just sitting in this park right we're sitting at a bench you know we're just chilling we're talking and somewhere out of the bushes from the streets or whatever I don't know a drunk Russian old guy comes up to us and you guys already know where this is going. <laughs> There's no other way where this could go, you know? So, you know, we're just sitting there and this old guy comes up to us and he actually didn't look like a... He didn't look like he would be the type of guy to start anything, you know what I mean? He looks like a sort of decent, actually educated guy and, you know, he was just drunk. He did not really look like he was there to start trouble. He just looks like, you know, he was drunk and he just was lonely and needed somebody to talk to. Which I understand, right? This is why I have this YouTube channel. <laughs> so, yeah, he comes up to us. He doesn't sit at the bench with us. He just stands in front of us, essentially, and uh, he just starts talking to everybody. Body, and for some reason he pays a lot of interest in me. I don't know why, maybe I, because I'm tall and I stand out a little bit. I didn't even look like this back in the day, I did not have long hair or anything, so... And I wasn't like even dripped out, I was just wearing whatever. But he still paid extra attention to me for some reason, and he wanted to, you know, talk to me more than others. And so I'm just sitting there, I'm chilling, like I'm already drunk as fuck at that point, it's like I'm just sitting there like this, you know? And here's the thing, I'm a well-raised, polite guy. I never start shit with anybody, I never call people names or try to hurt their feelings or whatever. 
whatever. So I was not trying to say anything bad to this guy whatsoever. I was just talking to him, you know, as an equal. And here's the thing. I don't actually remember what happens that clearly because I, very, I was very drunk. But basically, he started talking shit to me. I don't know what happens. Uh, maybe it is something that I said, but I highly doubt it. And I've actually asked my friends afterwards and they were like, no, you didn't say anything to start that whole stuff. So basically, that guy just for no reason started like talking shit about me. He was like ask, asking like, who do you think you are? You know, that type of stuff. And I didn't, I have no idea what caused him to, you know, get all angry at me and so defensive for some reason. Like I said, the people that were there said that it did not say anything offensive to him whatsoever. So I guess he was just, you know, a little bit off the henny, you know what I mean? But yeah, long story short, he started like start talking crap to me and I'm like, and he actually at that point started name calling me. He was saying like, you're just a fucking piece of shit. You're nothing. And I'm sitting there like, I'm already drunk. I'm not the type of guy to start fights once again. I, I'd rather much prefer to just fight it off verbally. That I'm very skilled in. And also I was sitting down. He was standing like right in front of me and I was just, you know, just, I was drunk. And I was like, why are you talking shit to me? I didn't say anything to offend you. I didn't say anything against you. And basically what happened is that he just punched me. I didn't even see it happening because I was, I, it was a sucker punch. I wasn't even looking at him. I, there was a girl sitting right next to me and I think I looked at her or something for a second and I got punched. I think, I feel like something like this. So he punched me kind of like, he was standing above me, but he punched me kind of like this. Or something like that. In fact, because he was drunk and he was like not tall, kind of skinny, kind of frail guy. He was an old guy as well. I think he was like 50 something. He hit me like this and like his head kind of just, uh, you know, it kind of just glided on my face like this and it actually hit the girl sitting next to me more. And the punch itself was not that hard. It's not the same kind of punch that, you know, that I got when I got my nose broken. That was a punch. I actually flew back to my, you know, to my back and I dropped. That was a hell of a punch. You know, that guy knew his stuff. So yeah, he punched me. I'm just there like, what? You know, I didn't even understand what's going on yet. So like, I'm in a little bit of a black hole for like three seconds and I'm like, I, I, I look back at him and I see that those two dudes, you know, that spoke Spanish, the Mexican dudes and the Colombian dude, they st immediately stand up and start beating the fuck out of him. So I'm like, I'm literally just like looking over it like this. I'm like, I'm like, what? And they're already there like fucking fucking going in. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh my god, what is happening? And so they're just beating them up, right? I don't know what's going on. Everybody's like just sitting there, completely, you know, stumbled. Nobody knows what to do. And so one of my friends, uh, you know, the one that I've known for a very long time, stands up and he's like, all right, let's just get the fuck out of here. So all of us, we get we get up, we start just walking away. But those two guys are still going in, beating the fuck out of him. Like, I know what they were doing, okay? Like, they have like a water bottle in their hands, so they started like spraying water on him and beating him up with a water bottle and like kicking him and shit. It was it was brutal, okay? You know, like those kind of dudes, Mexicans, Colombians, you know, they can throw it down for sure. I've, I've seen it myself. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying that I got shooters, you know what I mean? But yeah, basically all of us, we just start heading to the exit from this little park and uh, we exit the park, start walking a little bit away, like left. So we're already on the street at this point, right? So, like we walk away for a little bit, so we look back and uh, those two guys are already fighting with that guy uh, on, on the street at that point, on the same streets we're at. And he's like talking to him saying like, yo, why are you beating me? up like this you know let's go one-on-one -on -one. i'll fuck you up and stuff like that and we're just walking over like what the fuck is especially i'm drunk i'm, I'm like shocked i got punched in the face i'm like being carried by, by that point basically not like i was knocked out i was just like i was just shocked by the entire thing basically and so what happens next is that i look back and one of those guys uh, i think it was the mexican one uh he basically just screams out loud as fuck on the streets policia and they just start running towards us. And I'm like, what is going on? I don't know, like, I have- My brain has entered fight or flight mode, and what happens is that we- I just start running. I just have, start holding ass. I don't know where the fuck I'm going. And literally everybody, everybody who was with us, like, you know, all seven people that, you know, there were, we all just start running somewhere. I don't know where the fuck we're going. We're just running like crazy. Like, this is the hardest I've ever ran in my entire life. We just cross into some alleyway, into some dark place that we could hide. We just stand there. And all of us, we're just standing there, we're, like, panting or whatever. And that's like a little fence next to us or whatever and we're just standing there panting and those two guys the mexican and the spanish one just hop over the fence and just go away and I i've never seen them after that again so i don't know what happens if there actually was police that they saw i think they did i mean why otherwise would they scream that to just like scare the guy off away that they were beating that doesn't really make any sense and they actually were like very scared so because they jumped the fence and just 
you know, went in the complete other direction. We, though, we did our jump defense. We just stood there panting. We stood there for a little bit and we were like, okay. So we like went out, looked, looked at the streets. There was no police in sight anywhere. We were like, all right, we're safe. <laughs> so we just continued walking uh, for the rest of the night. We were like chilling by the river or whatever. And yeah, we just ended up like uh, going to a subway at, like five in the morning. And literally we just came into that subway and we just asked them if we could sleep there. And literally we just stayed there for, I think about uh, four hours. We just slept in the subway. This is some homeless shit, man. This is ridiculous. And then we actually exited that subway and we went to a, uh, I think it was some sort of cafe. We basically just ordered tea and we just, again, crashed there and uh, we just slept there for like three hours. Even though like nobody let us or anything. We just sat there and slept there for like three hours until it was like uh, 12 in the morning at that point. And yeah, then we just, you know, everybody just said, you know, let's call it the day and everybody went home uh, to just, you know, chill because it was an eventful night. And yeah, guys, that is basically it. That is the story of the craziest night of my life. I had two encounters with the police one time ran, running away from them and uh, also got punched in the face and uh, met some Spanish and Colombian dudes. I, unfortunately, I've never talked to them since, but you know what? I still think that I'm a amigo of the cartel and I got shooters, so... Uh don't mess with me, bro. Anyways, guys, I guess that is going to be pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I decided to just tell the story because I've been telling the story to everybody I know real life for ages and everybody was amazed by it. And thinking of it now, I didn't even know why I ran away because, like, I didn't even hurt anybody. I didn't I didn't punch anybody. I didn't have anything illegal on me or anything. So I don't know what was the point of running away from the police if it was there. But I did it anyway because, like, at that point, I was drunk. And I, I literally just entered fight or flight mode. But yeah, guys, once again, thank you so much for watching this video today. Once once again, guys, make sure to check out my Patreon link down in the description. Uh, check out my YouTube's down in the description as well. Hope you enjoyed this little story time and the kind of unusual video for my channel. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.